All right, folks, welcome back into another edition of the High School Huddle, your one-stop shop for everything and all things Section 5 Sports. I'm AJ Feldman. He's Carl Jones. We have reached the halfway point of the high school football season. Other sports as well, just about hitting the midway point, and it's been it's a good week. We had a good football frenzy. We had a, I don't know, would you say the, the, the college football slate was a little disappointing on Saturday for how hyped it was? We had a couple good games, but... No, I loved every second of it because I sat at home and watched all of it. So, I mean, maybe the games didn't like, you know, wasn't close 0-0, but I don't know. I'm from Ohio, so anytime I get to watch Ohio State Notre Dame have a classic, that that's all I need. Like, you know, and I'm and, and for all those at home, it is O-H-I-O till I die. I don't care. So sorry if I got any domers that's listening to this. I don't apologize. It is what it is. It's the Ohio in me. Y'all probably didn't even go to Notre Dame, so I don't want to hear it. O-H-I-O, baby. I was gonna say we got we got the OHIO with the, the Syracuse and the Syracuse and the Syracuse. <laughs> hey, look, Obviously, but like it's, it's in my bloodline though. Like yeah. I was born there. They can't take that away from me. Like you know, it's, I've been repping OHIO before. Like even the Buckeyes was like, you know, forget all that. Like it's OH, baby. You you domers who like fake domer fans. Like I don't want to hear none of that. Y'all never even stepped on the campus, so whatever. It's sorry about your loss. Hopefully y'all could have played out there and been that love player to, to win the game, but unfortunately it don't work like that. I know that's a tough look. It seems like this is a specialty of the Notre Dame defense is coming out. They, that this is like their thing. It's happened in past games, happened on third down, happened before a timeout, happened after timeout. I, I don't. I don't really know how that happens. I, I don't know how it happens either. Regardless, as someone who you know, I'm not gonna ruffle a lot of feathers here, but I'm not really the biggest gold helmet fan. You know, Notre Dame <laughs> fan, so I don't really feel that bad. And especially it came at the expense of my home state. So if they want to do that again later on in the year, I don't think they got to play nobody else that I really care about. You know what? Do it against Caleb Williams. I'll have fun against like, with that one too. That'd be fun. Yeah. I mean, plus all these college teams these days have like 75 different coaches. You think one of them, their job could be to like count the number of people on the field. It is. But... It is. I do remember that in college. You had a GA. He was late. So either he was asleep or he was so in tune in the game that he kind of lost his job too. Oh, well. A lot of fingers to point play, but, uh, but yeah, we had a great uh, high school football week. Uh, a lot of exciting games. I it, we we mentioned before that it was kind of a weird slate where all the games happened at seven, but luckily they were a little bit close, so so we could kind of bop around. And we kind of did that myself, especially to the max on Friday, where I went to four different games five different times in a very small short window, which usually doesn't happen. Usually. Especially, you know, seven o'clock games. Sometimes you can get three, but most of the times you're getting the first half, the second half of the game. My day on Friday night, it was starting at HFL at Virtus. Uh, HFL took care of business, got early touchdowns. I went over to Victor at Brighton. Victor scored two touchdowns before the half. I went over to East Rochester Gananda where Leroy was playing ERG. Got a quick touchdown from Leroy after the half. That game was going slow like East Rochester Gananda games usually do. So I was like, all right, Carl already went to Penfield Hilton, but he didn't get anything. So I'm going to go over to Penfield Hilton. Got some points and plays from Hilton at Penfield. Was able to come back to East Rochester Gananda. Got two touchdowns. You know, uh, the Bombers scored one right in my face. The, the Wacken Knights uh, ran right down the field. We'll talk about them later, but... And then honestly, I probably I could have gotten even maybe one more if, if things would have worked out. I had a little bit of time, but we, we just headed back. So it was a fun night. It, it's fun when things, you know, these crazy plans in my head actually work out. It was a lot of ripping and running on uh, Friday. And I like it really wasn't for me, to be honest. Like, you know, you prep did what they were supposed to do. And then I get my second game at this point. But regardless, it was the, it was the Hilton game. Yeah, it was the Hilton game. And it kind of felt like Rombo Roundup where we're in the gym for like 10, 15 minutes or something like that. Not even. And then you send me the text talking about some you over at all these different games. I'm like, ooh, we he hustling today. So it turned out for a good slate. And I had I must say it was definitely fun Friday night. Yeah, Carl just kind of does his own thing. I, I've got the the map in my back pocket. I'm, you know, Charlie Day, the, the meme, whatever. I'm like, and Carl's like, all right, you, you tell me where to go. I'll go. Um, it, it works out. It works out well. I, I like uh uh, you know, masterminding the whole scheme. So I'm well up for that. Uh, we'll talk about those games in a little bit. We're going to start off with uh, girls soccer. We have our first New York State Sports Writers Association girls soccer state rankings. These came out a couple days ago, so they're a little outdated with the games and all, but generally, you know, they, they stand strong. 
Uh, we'll start in Class AAA, where we do not have any Section 5 teams uh, represented in those rankings. Obviously, we've talked about this before. There's only uh, you know, two county schools in Class AAA this year, Fairport and Rush Henrietta. There's also an RCSD United team. Both, all three of those squads are under 500 right now, so certainly a down year for Section 5 in those Class AAA. But someone's got to win it, and you never know what happens in soccer when they, uh, they reach – the uh you know the far west regionals they'll probably play lancaster because i know in volleyball they were the only team in the class triple a they're the only team in the state rankings so uh, you know who's who knows what's gonna happen there but we go to class double a where it's the spencer port rangers at number two in the state behind Somers, and spencer port has been lights out so far this season uh, they just beat aronicoy eight to one last night which might have been their most disappointing showing of the season because that was the first goal they let up all season long. Spencerport has just been dominating teams so far. They're currently 9-0 and on the year. And there are two other Section 5 teams ranked um, in these initial state rankings. Schrader is uh, 11th in the state. Thomas is 20th in the state. And I point that out because prior to that around the game Spencer Port played both of them they beat them both 4-0 so the best of the best outside of Spencer Port in section 5 and it was ugly and Carl you were at one of those games Spencer Port's obviously been a great team for years they always go to Cortland yada yada this yada yada that but this team might be this team is, is something special here man like usually when you talk about those statistics where a team hasn't given up a run or a goal or they've just gone a really long time like with just really stout defense you can usually say their schedule is the reason why like mm -hmm. oh like their schedule isn't that strong well they played against two teams who are in the state rankings nada donut not a goal so i mean if you had any questions on how i mean i know all the teams moved up from a to, to double a but if you have any questions on if this how this team will respond on the classification going up i think they're going to be just fine considering that they're ranked second in the state i saw them against thomas they were really really strong in all facets of the game defensively they were really stout thomas really couldn't um get many advantages in that regard and then you know spencer port is always going to be a really aggressive team on the attack so this is another year where spencer port is looking like they're going to make another run i believe is it Cortland in, in soccer Cortland in soccer yeah yeah so it looked like they might be on another run to that considering how they've dominated so far. But I mean, one goal through nine games is that sounds like some video game stuff. Definitely. And and we do want to point out that while they do did really beat down both of these Webster teams, they did play some tight games against some other teams earlier in the season. Maybe they've really found a, sec uh, a, a second form lately, but they only beat spent or they only beat Hilton one, nothing. They only beat Aquinas one, nothing. They only beat Churchville Charlie one, nothing. So I mean, soccer really doesn't matter. You score one goal, you got a defense like that. You can kind of pack it in a little bit. So maybe those one nothing games weren't as close as the score indicated. But certainly in Class AA, Spencer Port's world, and uh, everybody else is going to have to go through them. Class A, we have some other uh, strong teams as well here in Section 5 in this Class A. You've got, a, uh, you've got Pittsburgh Sutherland at 5th in the state. Uh, with a 6-1-2 and two standing when they uh, when they publish those uh, rankings. Right now, they're at 7-1-2. You've also got Batavia with a perfect season so far, an unde unbeaten season so far at 8-0-1. You've also got Aquinas, uh, Batavia 13th ranked in the state, Aquinas at 17th ranked in the state, and 8-1-1. and one. We haven't really seen any of these teams so far, I believe, on the season. Um, did I see Sutherland? Oh, yeah, I, I saw Sutherland really take care of HFL early on, which was impressive, but I don't think um, HFL is exactly up to their – yeah, they're 2-7-1 and one this year, so so it doesn't really say too much. But we're in this Class A where, you know, Sutherland's kind of playing down a little bit with these new state rankings. You know, they're, you know, they're up a little bit um, in, in usually in other sports, but – Batavia's got a really good team this year. Aquinas has got a really good team so far this year, obviously, based on their, their standing so far. Palmac is also in there. They're always dangerous. They still have Maya Ikewood, so they're probably right on the the you know the outside of this uh, state rankings. So Class A is going to be another fun one where, uh, you know, there's a lot of really strong teams, and I don't think you can say for sure, you know, Sutherland's going to come out on top since they're number one uh, locally and, and, you know, they're the bigger school here. Yeah, when I first saw that these rankings, I'm like, well, why in the world is Sutherland in Class A? Like, I was kind of <laughs> confused by that, especially when you look at uh, Batavia and uh, Aquinas in there. But, yeah, like you just alluded to, though, 
there's some strong uh, programs in there who got some rich tradition in, in girls soccer who aren't just going to lay down just because they see Sutherland on front of someone's jersey. Yeah, some of other Sutherland's win so far this year. They got a one nil victory over Athena. Um, they they tied. They they drew with Menden three three earlier this year. Um, they beat a good Canadaigua squad two to one. They just beat Su- they just beat Palmac, uh, the aforementioned Palmac three to one. So some good wins so far on uh, Menden's schedule. Uh, so far this season i'll take a quick look they do play aquinas on october 7th Uh, they do not play batavia so far so that should be a fun one uh going forward and then in some of these uh the smaller classes once again section five does really well represented in these um bath haverling is number one in the state so far with a perfect record at eight oh and oh um when these were posted looking right now yep they're still at eight oh and oh uh, you've got Canisteo Greenwood, Jasper Trutsburg at seven, and Minders Academy at 19th in the state. Going down to Class C, Gananda at fourth, uh, Byron Burgeon at six, Geneseo at ninth, Wheatland Shyla at 15th, and Keshequa at 20th. And in Class D, you've got Fillmore at uh, number one in the state with a perfect record. Um, just double checking to see if that's holding. Yep, they're at 10 0 0 on the season. North Star Christian is at six in the state and Genesee Valley, Belfast at 12th in the state. So in these smaller schools uh, classes, we've got Fillmore at number one in the state in Class D, Bath at number one in the state in Class B, Bath Haverling losing in the state championship game last year, uh, suffering a 2-1 defeat to Irvington. So you know that they're hungry to, to kind of make it back there. Um, Irvington is not in these state rankings at all, so they must have lost a lot. So, uh, you know, a lot of these small schools shown out so far. Bath uh, certainly one to keep an eye on um, with what they did last year and what they're doing so far this season. Yeah, and then speaking of Bath, just want to give a shout out to uh, Ella Yardum. I believe she she's a uh, scored her hundredth career goal last week. Is I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep. AJ? Yep. That was a uh, so, that was Section Five best baby. Yeah. So she's she's been a, a dominant player. Uh, for I've been we've been saying that name for a, a long time here. I've been seeing that for a while. She's finally a senior. Thank the Lord. I'm, so I don't feel that old, but. Uh, Shout out to her. She's having off to a great year. I think she's already had 18 goals on the year. And then you said Fillmore being number one in the state. I'm just going through the the statistics for soccer. They have the number one point score in section five. And I know things are a little bit skewed because of level of competition. But Hope Russell has 79 points so far this year. To put that in a little bit of context, second place has 47. So uh She's pretty good at soccer. I don't care who she's playing up, uh, playing against. So uh, these section five is well represented in the state rankings, and there's a few ladies who are really, really uh, showing out this year. Yeah, uh, Hope Russell. If if you don't know in soccer, specifically in girls soccer, I know I think boys soccer they might do it differently. But you get two points to when you score a goal, you get one for a go- for an assist. But still, anyway, uh, Hope Russell has 34 goals on the season. Nobody else has more goals plus assists. She's like Wayne Gretzky out here with all the the crazy statistics that she's got so far this season. That is ridiculous so far this season. 34 goals, and they have played, uh, let me make sure I get this right. They've played 10 games so far this season. She is averaging over a hat trick in every game that she, uh, she laces up the cleats there. Uh, Just imagine getting a hat trick and saying, "Ah, I play below my standards today. Like it it is. (laughs) Shout out to her, man. She's also a great year. No, yeah, we might have to get her, find her a way sometime to to get her on the Section 5 best. But uh, yeah, a lot of good good girls soccer teams, uh, excuse me. Uh, But we move our attention now to the the football field with our our teams of the week. We start off some teams that really impressed us, the team that is grabbing the headlines, the team that we really want to make sure that uh, that gets its recognition. So Carl, your team of the week. Yeah, the East Eagles for what they did in Canada last week. The Eagles are 4-0 this year. This game was crazy. Like, if I'm not mistaken, when like when I first got the like the score of the game, it may have been 21-7. I'm like, oh, okay, East went on the road, did East type things. Canada Eagles not as strong this year. The Eagles are soaring. Yada yada yada. Get back to the station. And AJ for some reason has the game on the TV. I'm like, what's <laughs> the world going on? Like he checking the score or something, like some stats. I don't know. Come to find out that East had literally just scored a game-winning touchdown. To give you guys a little synopsis, East was up 24 to 7 early in the third. Canada was stormed back, scoring 20 straight, uh, 20 unanswered. Took the lead with two minutes left to go in the game. The Eagles 
ran ran down the field, scored with, uh, with nine seconds remaining. Zamir Jackson hitting Irvin Wiggins for a touchdown. I mean, the Eagles being able to do that on the road, you could have easily this wilter considering that you wasn't scoring in the second half. Kennedy Egg was just pressuring you down play after play, making things happen, and the kids stepped up at the end of the game to make things happen. Zamir Jackson, uh, 355 total yards, 300 passing. Uh, Wiggins with uh, 84 reception, uh, 84 not receptions. Lord, that would be uh, crazy. 84 receiving yards with That's two That's some Puka Nakua stuff out there. For real, though. <laughs> and then uh, Anthony Diaz with 137 total yards as well. Uh, the Eagles found a way to, I guess, I'm not gonna say after choking, but after you know letting a lead go away, finding a way to compose themselves and go win the game down the stretch. That's no small feat at all. So that is my team of the week. Now, talk about resiliency. I mean, to to go on the road, to play the team that knocked you out of the sectional championship game last year. You know, these teams have played on uh, three of the last four, either championship games or sectional semifinals. I think it actually might be three out of the last four championship games. So obviously, a lot of history between these two teams. Uh, and to have a lead, a comfortable lead, and then to give it away. That, take, that takes a lot of composure. Luckily, they have two head coaches. They can give, you know, two separate <laughs> pep talks there. But, uh, you know, talk about uh, the Eagles really showing composure. I mean, Zymier Jackson, that is that is no small feat because this wasn't a, uh, you know, I don't have the exact specifics of this drive, but I was kind of watching this entire drive. This wasn't, you know, one deep busted pass and, you know, they got down to the goal line and then they scored. Now, this was like, you know, a quarterback leading a drive, like a legit two-minute drill, you know, you know, calling your timeouts, you know, getting out, you know, it was, this was a legit two minute drive. And for, for a quarterback to do that, you know, in class a, you know, it, it was, it was just really impressive to watch and, you know, clearly a, a worthy candidate to be our team of the week. Yeah. Just, just like you mentioned too, like the Eagles haven't really gotten over the candidate will hump, at least in the postseason. Mm-hmm. So when they're storming back, I mean, your mind can really play some games like, man, are we really just not on a level? Like, are we really like, is this really how it's, this is how it's going to go again? But they didn't let that thought creep in their head and they were able to go out and get the dub on the road, like you alluded to, which Canada is always going to have some good faithful there uh, to make that a tough place to play. Yeah, I will say that, you know, all the things we said about Canada last week, you know, they're down, they don't have as many playmakers, but they just always find a way. They just always find a way to get things close, gets things tight. Uh, the playoff story this year in Class A will not be written without. Uh, a hardy Canadago chapter, whether or not they win it all or whether or not someone needs to try like heck to knock them out. I'm going over to class double A for my team of the week, the Hilton Cadets, a team we've talked about before on the show with some of their impressive victories. Uh, I just saw them take down Penfield 27 to seven. As we mentioned before, Carl saw a little bit of that game as well. You know, you start and finish with, uh, with the Hilton Cadets with Robert Lowry. He scored their first eight touchdowns of the year. He scored all three in their first game, all three in their second game. Scored the first two against Rush Henrietta before finally letting someone else into the end zone. Uh, 22 carries for 112 yards. Wasn't just the the Robert Lowry show. Colton Thorpe, a quarterback, did a pretty good job. 10 for 15, 165 yards and a touchdown. He did throw three interceptions, though. One was like a tip on third and long. You know, the other one, it might have been third down as well. So I wasn't, you know, I had a good game despite throwing three interceptions. Also ran for 70 yards and a touchdown. Luke Lockhart with the receiving touchdown. And I have to say, I don't know if I counted out Hilton this year. I don't know if I underestimated Hilton this year. But the story with the cadets was last year, you know, they come down from class AA to A. You know, they take care of business. You know, they, they lost their first regular season game. They powered through. They had the running game. They had the offensive line. And this year they came back up to double A. And, you know, I kind of was thinking, oh, well, you know, maybe they go back in that role they've been in for years. You know, they finish five and three. They play, you know, ground and pound offense. And then they lose to the better teams uh, in the sectional playoff time. And that might be true, the, the second part of that, because they still haven't played McQuaid. They still haven't played U Prep this season. They will get both of those teams in the regular season. Um, so that'll be a good test for them. But shout out to Hilton for, you know, at least so far this season, proven that they are legit in Class AA. So far, the clear number three team in Class AA. And it might be number two. They might be number one. Who knows? I, I think they can match up really well with McQuaid. Um, you know, they kind of have similar profiles, good defense, a real talented running back. 
a quarterback who can scramble, who can throw the ball downfield a little bit, but isn't exactly going to beat you. And then, you know, you prep, uh, we, we've talked a lot about you prep before. They've got a lot of talented playmakers, but they've shown that in the past, they haven't exactly been able to take that playoff hump. They lost to Canadagua two years ago in the classic crossover game. They lost to Pittsburgh. They got shut out in the sectional semis. So not always showing up uh, in the postseason. So don't count out the Hilton Cadets because uh, they're off to a 4-0 start this season, and uh, they've looked pretty darn good doing it. Yeah, and this game might not be the greatest example of it, but like you alluded to earlier about how much how reliant they were upon Robert Lowry and just scoring all the touchdowns, he did have a good game. Don't get it twisted. 122 yards is good no matter who you're up against. But it wasn't like, hey, go take go backpack us to a victory this week. I mean, mm-hmm. the defense played well, all the interceptions. I saw one right before I had, oh, no, actually, that was Penfield getting one. <laughs> but regardless, uh, it wasn't like they were like, oh, hey, Robert, you know, hey, you, you good? Your, your tank is good? All right, go get the ball. Like, it, they've shown that they can win in other ways, in other variety of ways, instead of just handing the ball back, handing the ball to number 12 every single play. So that is encouraging to see because when you get into playoffs, every team is going to take away or at least try to take away your best punch, what is your change up? What is your, your second uh, speed right there? So the, the cadets are showing that, hey, we're just not the Robert Lowry show. We can do some other things to come out on top. Yeah, and Hilton's, um, we're going to talk about their schedule coming up a little bit, but they do have McQuaid, as we mentioned. They do have U prep. So Hilton's, Hilton's going to prove if they're really, really legit. And uh, once we start racking up our uh, local football rankings, which will probably start next week, um, we'll find out for sure about the cadets. Moving on to our Eyes on You team of the week. Either a team that we haven't talked about too much on this show, a team that really grabbed our attention, a team we want to show some love to, some team that you need to have on your radar. Carl, your Eyes on You team for this week. Let's show some love to Rochester Prep, getting their first win in program history. Not for the season, program history, all right? Taking down Dansville, Waco, 12 to 6. And there's some stats in here that are cool to see. But it's going to start and end with Mr. Jameer Walters. Nine catches, 248 receiving yards, and two tutties. I mean, you want to talk about putting the team on your back and saying, let's go, let's get it, let's go get a dub? I mean, that that is what that is right there. He also, I believe the the last one was a game-winning touchdown from Tyler Benjamin, who also had 266 passing yards. And then the other guy who had a good game at the office, Reed Martin, uh, rush, rushing for 45 and then another 66 passing. I mean, come on, first win of the year. I got to give you some love. I mean, first win in your program's history, excuse me. I got to give you some love for that. Uh, I know losing is not fun no matter what sport it is, especially a sport like football, as we've talked about at nauseum <laughs> on this podcast. Losing, losing sucks, but then getting hit and then losing sucks and then getting hit when it's cold sucks. So the fact that they were able – to get a win in this sport, which is, is not fun at all when you're losing, is dope to see. So those kids deserve the love and then some. And then also want to throw a little sugar on top for Mr. Jameer Walters for the performance that he had. Yeah, and I mean, and Dansville Waco, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're not a very good football team, but they played Virtus earlier this year. They beat them 3 nothing, and a team that Virtus, who beat Rochester Prep earlier in this year, they played Geneva in, in week two, or I guess actually week three, they only lost to them 16 to nothing. We've talked good things about Geneva. There are some talented players on that Geneva football team for sure. So, you know, both teams, Geneva and Rochester Prep, scored two touchdowns against them. So shout out to Rochester Prep getting it done, um, getting their first win in program history. You know, a team that was combined with Bishop Carney last year. Uh, it seemed it seemed like Rochester Prep got, uh, they won the divorce uh, where they got a good majority uh of uh, some of the ballers out there. Uh, Bishop Carney is having a little bit of a tough year. Uh, but congratulations to Rochester Prep, first ever win. Yeah, man, that's that's dope to see. And then Jameer Walters, shout out to you, my man. Shout out to you. Yeah, if you listen uh, tonight on 6 o'clock and 11, you might hear your name on Section 5 best. Uh, just, a, just a prediction there. Um, speaking of players and performances that uh, worthy of your attention, my eyes on you, team. Leroy. The, uh, the Knights, the Wacken Knights. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I never exactly remember, but I think that's right. Uh, Tony Piazza, 19 carries, 219 yards, four touchdowns. And Leroy really got it done all game long on the ground. They're a ground and pound team. They had seven drives on offense. 
They scored seven touchdowns. They beat East Rochester Gananda 50 to 34. As I mentioned, I was at this game. And this is, you know, we talk about change-ups. We talk about, you know, second speed pitches, things like that. This was just Leroy, you know, they could have yelled the play over to the other team, to East Rochester, be like, hey, we're going to run. And they did. And they kept running all the way down the field, and they scored uh, every single time they had the ball. Uh, Drew Strollo, he had five, 15 carries for 93 yards. Jackson Fix, 12 carries for 56 yards and two touchdowns. They did have a passing touchdown. Tommy uh, Condidorio to Adrian Stevens, that was a 70-yard pass. But we talked about Attica Alexander. We talked about East Rochester Ganon, of course. Let's talk about Leroy, Tony Piazza. They're just, he's a stout runner. He's got a little bit of speed, but he's going to beat you inside the tackles. He did bust out like a 65-yard run. They've already beat Bath Haverling uh, 43 to 6. They beat Letchworth Warsaw Perry 12 to 7. They beat Lions Sodas 38 to 16. They've got a big game this weekend against Attica Alexander, uh, a one versus two game in Class C, which uh, the winner will surely have, um, at least in Class C, the number one spot in our local rankings. But how about Leroy? What a game from them. Yeah, I know. I remember two weeks ago on this podcast where I was like, hey, this is my game of the week. And then I overshadowed the fact that Attica was playing ERG. And I'm like, oh, my bad, Attica. They Leroy kind of vindicated why I felt like the way I did two weeks ago. I mean, we talk about styles making fights all the darn time. But I mean, what 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 style can help you out if a team scores every single time they get the ball? Like, I, I don't know. Like, that just sounds like a good recipe to me. You know, when coaches say, hey. We're going to get the ball and we're going to score. Yeah, coach, but what if we don't? Well, Leroy don't got to worry about that. We did, coach. So what's next? So, I mean, there's not enough good things you can say about a performance like that where you literally go seven for seven in football. Like, that's absurd. I don't care. That's, that's a Josh Allen in the playoff performance. For real. It's like, the that, that's the type of – yeah, exactly. And it's even harder to do that on the ground considering, like, you get one penalty and now you're behind the sticks. So, yeah. like – it, the fact that they were able to to do that against a team like ERG, which we've given flowers at nauseum on this podcast, no small feat at all. Leroy, y'all, I'm locked in to seeing what y'all doing the rest of the year, especially this upcoming weekend. Yeah, I think we'll, we will be able to get uh, our news photographer, Damon, out there. Uh, who just got a shout out, doing a great job on the camera uh, job so far this year. I think we will be able to get him out to that game. So that should be a great one, Attica Alexander versus Leroy. Uh, that game did end with about seven or eight minutes to go because of a, a medical situation on the East Rochester side. So uh, wishing the best for him. I haven't heard anything uh, um, you know, too serious in that regards. I was talking to the AD a little bit. So um, I assume that he is doing well. So, uh, so uh, thinking of him. Uh, but we now turn our attention to some of the games we're looking forward to this week. Obviously, the Attica, Exaler, and Attica Alexander and Leroy game, one of them. Uh, but we got two other great ones on this slate for you, Carl. Your game of the week. I don't got to dress it up. I ain't got to put no fancy wedding dress on it. Hilton, back at um, taking on Schrader, rematch of last year's. Uh, I don't know if it was A1 or A2 championship A1, game. Yeah. No rain this time. I don't think it's no rain. I talked to Snyder. The forecast looking good this time. I just talked about Styles making fights here. Hilton hit you in the mouth, ground and pound. Got some sprinkling some passes here and there. Schrader trying to chuck it all over the yard. They can hand the ball off a little bit, but those two teams, their bread and butter are complete opposites. I can't wait for it. Uh, Schrader's still uh, – they have a loss, but it was to Victor 15-14. Um, so they still – they've they've dealt with a team who's physical already this year. It's not like they're going to be surprised when the cadets come rolling in um, Friday night. But I can't wait for it. Um, every time that you watch these two teams link up, you know it's going to be fireworks in one way, shape, or form, whether it's Robert Lowry making someone fall, going the distance, or the Warriors chucking it all over the yard. No, they have some some really talented pass catchers on Schrader. Schrader is, I think, a team that's getting, a, you know, they don't exactly give out the votes for these honorable mentions, but I'm surprised I haven't seen Schrader so far in the rankings so far this year. They deserve to be ranked, um, and certainly a win over a quality team like Hilton um, will do that to, uh, to probably them next week. I'm going uh, staying in Class A, um, you know, talking about Class A before, for my game to watch, Aronicoid versus Victor. Both teams at 4-0 on the season. Both teams uh, looking good in their uh, their success so far this year. Victor um, certainly playing a more difficult schedule so far this season. Aronicoid, they've got four blowout wins. Um, only one of their opponent has a single win so far this season. They beat Brockport 35-11. to So this is really a, uh, all right, Aronicoid, you know, you're taking care of your business. You're, you're beating the teams you're supposed to beat. 
Now let's see a, see a performance against a good team like Victor. Adam Ruffalo, the story for Victor defeating Brighton 21-14. to He was our player of the week. 57 yards, he had a touchdown pass. He's usually a wide receiver. He caught eight balls for 108 yards, had the game-winning touchdown in the fourth quarter, uh, 75 yards for a touchdown, 18 tackles on defense, and a punt block on special teams. So you talk about a guy doing it all. That was Adam Ruffalo. They didn't have Jacob Laughlin in that game, their senior quarterback. Eric Torres did a good job in relief. Um, freshman quarterback, 10 for 14, 131 yards and a touchdown. I ass- I haven't seen anything to say otherwise that it wasn't some sort of an injury. I don't exactly know what's up with uh, Mr. Laughlin, but I've seen Victor play a couple times. And this isn't a, you know, them winning in spite of their quarterback type of thing where you might think they want to, you know, change things up a little bit. Um, so we'll see if he comes back uh, this week or some point later this season. Aronicoit's really been doing it with a ground attack so far this season. Miles Wins had a couple big games. Cam Freeman had two touchdowns against uh, East Ridge. Jordan Nolan as well. Um, their quarterback, Tatum McAberry, he's kind of a dual threat guy. So, all right, Aronicoit, you've beaten up on the teams you're supposed to beat. Let's see what you can do against Victor. Nice measuring stick game for the Eagles this week. And also, Mr. Ruffalo, ice bath. Icy hot. Um, what else I got over here? Biofreeze. Use all of that because it sounds like you're going both ways. Special teams as well. You're going to need it. I know you think you're young and you're invincible. Mm-mm. Let's just take care of our body. The Blue Devil's going to need you until no- in October and beyond. So make sure you're using those three things right there. Heat. Heating pads too. Make sure we're taking care Stretching. Bananas. Just make sure you're doing the things to make sure that you – can do that every single week because if you can do that every week, my boy, the Vic, the Blue Devils will go a long, long way. Yeah, you got uh, you know the pickle juice, uh, you know, orange slices, all that and above. I mean, he's, he's pulling some Travis Hunter performances out here, and we saw what happened when a team can lose a guy like Travis Hunter. So even though, even though that really didn't make that much difference in that Colorado <laughs> Oregon game, uh, but no, it's going to be a great week of Friday night games. We're going to have you covered every step of the way. Um, should be a good one. We got a great week of football coming up. You got, speaking of teams, proving if they're for real, the Syracuse Orange taking on Clemson. We got the Bills and the Dolphins. Obviously, everybody knows all the storylines there. It's going to be a great week on the football, Carl. Per usual, man, per usual. I mean, look, the Orange is a nice slate right here, inviting the Tigers to the Dome. And anybody who's followed the Orange football in the past five, six, seven years, we don't bow down to the Tigers. We always compete. So hopefully this time around, Dabo is leaving upstate New York with another L. Should be a great game. Uh, we will have you covered on News 8 with Football Frenzy on Friday nights. We'll have you online at rochesterfirst.com. You can check out the Twitter feeds, things like that. We thank you very much for watching the High School Huddle. Next week, as I mentioned, we will be uh, debuting our local football rankings so you know we've had a pretty good sample size so far finally get our chance to to rank up these teams and uh maybe start a little discussion there but once again thank you for listening to the high school huddle you can find us on apple Podcasts. you can find us on spotify you can watch us on youtube and you can watch us on rochesterfirst.com for carl jones i am aj fellman thank you so much for listening thank you so much for watching we will see you next time have a great weekend of football see you next week